Hello guys, in this video we are going to have a good look at the BenQ SW270C, which is a specific photographer's monitor. So in brief, this is a 27 inch 2K monitor, it's currently retailing at around £699. And firstly, what we need to discuss is what makes this then a specific photographer's monitor compared to other monitors. So you've got your standard monitor that you may well have for your you know, computer, and it's probably at standard HD. That's the resolution of it, standard HD, and it's probably working in a color space of what's called standard RGB, right? They, they are the normal monitors. Well, this one is a 2K monitor, all right, which basically means it's higher resolution. So a normal full HD monitor has 1920 pixels along its longest edge. Well, this one has 2560 pixels along its longest edge. And that basically means that there is more detail, all right? There's more resolution in this screen for you to view. So when you are editing and looking at pictures, quite simply, you can zoom in further and you can see more detail, right? So you can get right into the pixels a lot more than you can with a normal full HD screen. And the next thing that makes this a specific photographer's monitor is the color space that it works in. It's got what's called a wider color gamut. So again, a normal, full HD screen normally is in what's called standard RGB. That's the color space that it's got, standard RGB. This one works in what's called Adobe RGB, and that is a wider color gamut. And in short, what it means is that you get 30% more color when you're looking at your pictures in that color space in Adobe RGB. It's mainly in the blues and the greens of the shot. And you know, 30% more color is actually a lot more, all right? It's millions and millions more colors that you see when you're working in a color space of Adobe RGB. Now, that's not gonna make much difference to you if most of the stuff that you do is for screen. Because most of them devices, you know, like normal screens, TVs, phones, tablets, they work in standard RGB anyway. It comes into play when you are printing photography. So if you are printing your work, your colors are gonna be much more accurate when you are working in the color space Adobe RGB and they're going to also be more vibrant as well so you can work with more vibrancy in, with your colors when you're printing your work. So that's the main difference between normal monitors if you like you know standard full HD monitors that you'll pick up anywhere and a specific photographer's monitor. It just comes down to the resolution and the wider color gamut that's the main thing so you can see more detail in the shot and you can see more colors in the shot, which comes in handy when you're trying to print. So now let's talk more about this actual monitor. So firstly, you're gonna to need to calibrate it. It's actually, it comes straight out of the box calibrated quite well. So you can, in fact, just pull it out of the box and use it straight away. But I do recommend you calibrate it anyway. And you can calibrate it with its own palette master software that comes you know with this monitor and you're going to need to use either the X-Rite monitor calibrator or the data color spider calibrator as well so you're going to need to get yourself one of them to calibrate this monitor I'm going to put links to all of this stuff in the description anyway so you can go and have a look at them the next thing I want to talk about what comes with this monitor is something called a hot puck key, right? And uh, it's a really cool little device that enables you to switch between color spaces very easily. So all I need to do is press this number two here on the hot puck key, and then it goes into a standard RGB workspace. If I press the number one, it will go back into the Adobe RGB workspace. If I press number three, it will go into a black and white 
workspace, which is great if that's what you're doing. If you're doing a lot of black and white stuff, you know, this hot puck is gonna be really, really cool. So I'm just gonna press it back onto number one here to go back to Adobe RGB. Now you might not see the color difference, so I'm doing a screen capture here for you to see it. You might not see that color difference because the video is going to be rendered out in standard RGB anyway, but you, so you're just going to have to trust me that it looks different from what I'm seeing here. The other cool thing it has is it has this little dial which enables you to make the monitor brighter or darker really, really easy, all right? So that's a really good thing to have. You know, you can see how your pictures are going to look you know, on a normal standard RGB monitor really quickly just by pressing number two on the hot putt key. This has also got this feature which I really like. It's called Gamut Duo. And what it means is that you can actually look at the same picture on screen with two separate color spaces. So I can get this picture here that I've got on Lightroom and I can view that on the same screen in Adobe RGB and standard RGB color spaces, which is really, really cool actually. And I'm just gonna show you how that is done. And here we have it, right? So now on screen, I am viewing the same picture under two different color spaces. The one on the left here is the Adobe RGB color space, and the one on the right is the standard RGB color space. You know, and I can see a real difference here you probably won't be seeing it on this video because like I say, you're probably viewing it on a standard RGB screen anyway, and it's rendered out as standard RGB, so you are definitely not gonna be seeing what I'm seeing. Again, you're gonna have to trust me. The Adobe RGB one on the left is much more vibrant than the one on the right because that's standard RGB. And I really like that feature because it's really gonna help people out that are you know, printing their photography work, but also they wanna see how it's going to look on a website, for instance. So I think, it's, I think it's a really good touch that BenQ has added to this particular monitor. It also comes with this shading hood here, this monitor shading hood, which is a really great thing. Once you start using one of these, you, know, you won't go back. Uh, it really makes a difference. What it does is it blocks off any ambient light from your screen. So you literally get no glare. I suppose it's like having a lens hood on your camera, all right? It's like it's a lens hood for the monitor. It stops any glare going across the monitor, which in turn helps you see the picture better. So, you know, it's a great touch to have this with the monitor. This monitor's also got lots of different inputs for lots of different things. So for instance, it's got a USB-C input, it's got an SD card reader in it, and you know, it's got lots of different inputs. And I'm gonna put the full specs in the description of this video. There'll be a link and you can click on it and you can view the full specs of this monitor and buy it if you want to. So that'll be in the uh, description of this video. And now here is my conclusion, all right? I've had a good play with this. You know, BenQ has sent me one of these to have a good play with and give you an honest review. So I can basically say whatever I want, all right? Um, I'm gonna go with the cons first of all. Let's start with the cons. It's a big, heavy monitor and you may well not be used to that. So that could be a con for you. If you want something small, thin and light, this is not gonna be for you. The other thing is, it's not very energy efficient, all right? Now, you know, this day and age, I think every company, including ours, needs to think about the environment and how we're gonna help it out. So this is not the most energy efficient product. So, you know, I would put that down as a con as well. It also might seem a bit expensive, you know, 700 pounds for argument's sake for, a monitor, all right? That may well be more than your actual computer's worth. So again, that might not sit well with people. So here's the pros, right? It is a really good piece of kit. So we talked a minute ago about big and heavy. That can also mean, you know, good quality and sturdy. I mean, it is a proper good piece of kit. I've got the 4K version of this as well. I've got BenQ's 4K version. And I've had it for well, well over a year now. And you know, it's a great piece of kit and I can only assume that this is gonna be similar. It won't let you down. So, you know, that's one of the pros to it. Another pro is if you're thinking of printing, 
you know, if you or if you already do print pictures, you may well be, you know, like a wedding photographer and you may send out prints all the time. You may be a landscape photographer and you may be printing for yourself or whatever. But if it's printing that you're doing, this is going to do you a favor because you're going to see them colors more accurately and they're going to be more vivid. So, you know, that's a pro. Also, if you're editing shots, you're doing a lot of Lightroom work or a lot of Photoshop work, this is gonna do you a favor as well because you can zoom into them pixels more and see more detail. So again, them two things are really good pros for this monitor. So let's sum up, shall we? Let's, um, let's go with the cost of it. So it is quite an expensive monitor and let's face it, the monitor is not gonna make your photography great. Only your knowledge is gonna make your photography great, all right? You can create the same photography on a standard full HD monitor that's, you know, 100 quid if you wanted to. It's not gonna, you know, it's not gonna change your photography. Only your knowledge is gonna change your photography. But it will help with the editing and the printing of your pictures. You know, it's gonna make your life easier. So, you know, let's think about this cost. So for a standard full HD monitor, you might pick one up for 150 quid, 200 quid, it's gonna do the job fine. If you wanted a 2K monitor, standard one, that's like not specific for photographers, you might pick one up for, I don't know, 400, 500 pounds. And this is 699, 700 pounds. So you've gotta think about what you're getting for that extra money, all right? You're getting that extra color and you're getting that extra detail when you're zooming into the pixels. You're also getting a very easy way to view your pictures in different color spaces, which don't come with many monitors, all right? So, you know, they're all the things that you're getting extra, if you like, if you spend that extra bit of money on a specific photographer's monitor. So is it worth that extra few hundred quid? Well. You're the one that's gonna to have to decide that, I'm afraid. You've gotta think about what you do in your photography and whether this will help you out. I mean, it's certainly gonna help out any professional photographer who is printing their own work and budding photographers that are looking to print their own work. You know, this is certainly gonna help you out if that's you. So links to this product, if you wanna go and buy it, that will be in the description of this uh, video. And, and also links to the full specifications of this um, monitor, that will also be in the description of this video. There'll be a link there, click on it and go and check it all out. Don't forget, if you wanna learn photography properly, come over and see us at the schoolofphotography.com. We've got photography courses, Lightroom, Photoshop, studio lighting, loads and loads of stuff and loads of freebies for you to try before you buy as well. So come and check us out over there. Like this video, share it with your friends, you know all the things, subscribe to our channel and all of that kind of stuff, all right? We love every one of you that like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and remember, learn more in the School of Photography.